for the people, by the people. Good evening, you're watching Primetime News here on TV1. For the News Plus team, I am Dwa Zeyfan. Before we move on to our bulletin, here's a look at your headlines for this evening. Three IUSF activists charged under PTA and detained under detention orders. Multiple groups condemn using PTA against dissent. Then, Sanatu via Parva to Muna than Anapanatuli Nitri Tivalinta, my part of my minister to Muna than there. We are under the Tadino than Kalakino, maybe Marnakarit and Muhammad Atrakarana. Fuel procurement made a profit making venture, a revelation from Champikaranavaka. Bribery Commission discontinues investigation on bribes to cross over. Is the Pohot tour ready to take up ministerial positions? We are going to talk about the Pohot tour. We are going to talk about the Pohot tour. We are going to talk about the Pohot tour. Opposition leader ready to meet president again to discuss plans to build the country. Now what your top story this evening. Sri Lanka police said that the convener of the Inter-University Students Federation and two others will be held for questioning under detention orders. The office of the police media division said that Venerable Galvava Siri Damatero and Bashanta Jeevanta Gunathilaka will be held under detention orders in addition to Vasanta Mudilige, the Inter-University Students Federation convener. 19 people were arrested by Sri Lanka police on Thursday evening following a protest in Colombo. Sri Lanka police said the suspects were arrested by the Cinnamon Gardens, Slave Island, Borala Police Stations and the Kalania Crimes Division. 16 of the suspects were released on a personal bail of 500,000 rupees each by the Colombo Additional Magistrates Court. Venerable Galba Vasiri Dhammathera, Pashanta Jeevanta Gunathilaka and Vasanta Mudalige were not released on bail. The 16 suspects who were released on bail were charged with unlawful assembly and obstructing the duties of police officers by blocking the road. Colombo Additional Magistrate TNL Ilanga Singha issued an overseas travel ban on actor Jehan Apuhami, who is charged with escaping from police custody following Thursday's protest. The Additional Magistrate made the order following a request made by the Slave Island Police. Sri Lanka Police told court that the Inter-University Students Federation, instead of protesting at Lipton Circus, had attempted to proceed to fort via Union Place by blocking the roads. Sri Lanka Police pointed out that the student protesters had assaulted police officers and obstructed their duties. Sri Lanka police told the court that they arrested the suspects who defied a police order to disperse from the area. Police requested the court to remand the 16 suspects until the investigations were completed. However, President's Council Salia Pires, appearing for the student activists, told court that the submissions by the Sri Lanka police were fabricated and false. The President's Council told the court that a large police force from Union Place chased after the peaceful protesters at Lipton Circus and repeatedly attacked them. President's Council Salia Piri stressed that the allegations made by police claiming that the student activists hurled stones at the police officers is completely false. He said that Sri Lanka police were making inaccurate submissions to portray the peaceful protest as one that was unlawful. President's counsel Rienzi Alzakularatna, who was also appearing for the suspects, noted that Sri Lanka police had not informed the court of the offence committed by the protesters to term their protest as an unlawful one when the protest itself contained slogans demanding the reopening of universities and to bring down the cost of living. The President's counsel noted that Sri Lanka police had exploited the law. Upon considering the submissions made by the council, the court ordered for the 16 suspects to be released on bail and fixed the 12th of September as the next court date for the case. At the time of the arrest, the activists were assaulted inside a van and SUV. The victims of the assaults were present here. The people are under pressure from the government. When we speak of that, 
they use suppression. Binti University Students Federation will not back down. This is the democracy of Pranil Vikramasinghe, who claimed to have a wealth of knowledge. That Pranil Vikramasinghe is now launching brutal attacks, and the people witnessed it. The detention orders are made under the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Police produced a B report on the protest, but did not mention any act that related to an act of terror or to topple the government. A separate detention order was obtained against Vasant Mudrige for those who were chased. That is unjust and it is clear why they have been using the PTA. People voicing dissent against the government are being arrested under the PTA, irrespective if they are from the north or south. Ranil Vikramasinghe's government is using the PTA to suppress those who are against the government. This is an attempt to use the detention orders bearing the signature of the Secretary of Defense to detain Aragale protesters, trade union leaders, farmers and student activists. They are trying to do so without producing any charges. The Secretary of Defense even has the authority to exercise the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Now they introduced a new section under the emergency law that the local police chief of that particular area has the full authority to impose a detention order that can last up to two weeks. And now they are exploiting the PTA against the protesters. The PTA was exercised back then when there were armed struggles in Sri Lanka. The regular people of this country who are protesting because they don't have food to eat now are being treated with the same regulations. Concerns were raised at media briefings over the arrests of student activists. We would like to clearly tell Ranil Vikramasinghe that if you continue to detain Vasant Mudalige with detention orders, there would be a turning point in Sri Lanka's political sphere. If that is how you are planning on solving the issues in the country, we are ready to face it. There is a massive pressure from the international community to remove the Prevention of Terrorism Act, especially from countries that focus on democracy. Ranil is trying to do this by deceiving all of them. Ranil, we challenge you to do it if you can. If you identify the activists who are trying to change society and who are trying to provide relief to people as terrorists, then this is a time when hundreds of thousands of terrorists are coming to society. University students and the public are uniting in a struggle against the current regime. We would like to inform the administration, including Ranil Vikramasinghe, that we will never bow down to your suppression. Ranil Rajapaksa is trying to take our country to the next level. The next level is where he creates a mafia to privatize the state assets. The response to Ranil will be stronger than what Gotabe got. They're trying to suppress the student movements, labor movements and youth organizations. President Ranil Vikramasinghe says that the crisis will erupt in about three months. They're trying to suppress the people. The violence inflicted by the police is an issue when there's no other violence. These were the views expressed at a conference held in Colombo today on the theme of struggle and civic duty. This crisis is clearly seen because new things have not yet been born at a time when old things are dying. This is the time of monsters. These monsters, these monsters like to be known as monsters. In a new era of monsters, we need to understand who is Ranil Vikramasinghe. He has accepted a certain contract. What is that about? Providing security. A three-pronged security. Firstly, for the 225 in parliament. It acts as a buffer that suppresses the righteous anger and opposition of the people. Secondly, providing protection for frauds committed by them through the law. Thirdly, even though those people could not go to their electorate, they will be able to sit in parliament for two and a half years. Ranil Vikramasinghe has legitimacy in the parliament as long as the three-pronged protection is provided. He can obviously do that. The only way is to launch a very violent crackdown. This was the practice of Prabhakaran as well. He too brought in arbitrary stability, arbitrary security and arbitrary sovereignty and things of the sort. That is why the middle class retreated from the struggle. Don't sign up Ranil for that dirty job. As far as I know, Ranil Vikramasinghe's engine is revenge. Ranil Vikramasinghe Mamadana Taraming Kriyatmaka Venne Yage Injima Venne Paligeni.
The Janata Vimukti Peramuna convened a media briefing in Colombo to condemn the attack on IUSF protest march. The university students were engaged in a peaceful march. It is a constitutional right to engage in protest marches. Despite that, Ranil Vikramasinghe deployed a police force that is normally on standby for a war and attacked this peaceful protest march. We as the JVP condemn the attack on the IUSF protest march. We stress that the government must end such suppressive measures. If not, the dissent will be far more greater and he will have to exit using the same path used by Gota Beraj. Boxer. There is an attempt to intimidate journalists and media organizations. We were told that the chairman of the Citizen Media Network was taken for questioning for several hours based on the incident where the residence of Ranil Vikramasinghe was set on fire. They have crossed the levels of intimidating journalists and have now started to intimidate the owners of media institutions. By taking the chairman of the Citizen Media Network for questioning, Ranil Vikramasinghe is showing that if one reports the truth, not only the journalists, but the media institutions will also be intimidated. He is attacking the people, adding pressure on the people, and he is awarding benefits to the MPs that elected him as president. It does not end there. He is awarding benefits to those in his own party and the henchmen. The interest he shows to arrest those engaging in the Aragalia protests is not evident in chasing after Arjuna Mahendran, who committed the bond scam. Arjuna Mahendran roams free. Arjuna Mahendran is Arjuna Mahendran is Sri Lankan fisherfolk have taken to the street against the government's inability to deliver fuel to power their boats. Protest by Sri Lankan fishermen in the coastal town of Chilau demanding a solution to the fuel crisis continued for the fourth day and many fishermen have taken to the street citing that they were unable to engage in their trade for almost three months. The Chilau fish market remains closed for the sixth consecutive day in support of the protest. Boats are not setting out to sea, so the fisher folk have no means of income. The people have been rendered helpless. The fish market is closed due to the fuel crisis. It is said that fuel will be available next week. We are only left with dried fish. It's been three months since we had fish to eat. The children are in hunger. The protest opposite the Chilau Urban Council was joined by fishermen from several areas in the Putlam district. The protest by fishermen from the coastal town of Nikambo continued for the fourth consecutive day on Friday next to the Periamula railway crossing. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe visited veteran actor Jackson e. Anthony at the Colombo National Hospital to inquire into his well-being. Jackson Anthony is currently receiving treatment after he met with an accident recently. <laughs> President Ranil Vikramasinghe spoke to Jackson Anthony's family after visiting the actor in hospital. The president also inquired into the medicine shortage in the hospital. He stressed that he has a great responsibility over the lives of the people affected by the medicine shortage. President Ranil Vikramasinghe met a United Nations delegation at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday. The UN delegation included Regional Director Asia Pacific, UN Development Coordination Office David McLaughlin Carr, UN Sri Lanka Resident Coordinator Hannah Singer, and Resident Coordinator Office Team Leader and Strategic Planning Officer Andreas Kapati. Patali Champika Ranavaka is an independent MP in Parliament and speaking to reporters on Friday, he revealed that massive profits are being generated by those who are involved in procuring fuel for Sri Lanka amidst the economic crisis. We highlighted the fact that massive premiums were being paid when procuring fuel for the country at a time where there is a shortage of dollars. It was reported in the media that Power and Energy Minister Kanchana Vijay Sekara had filed a complaint with the CID. However, we cannot assume that the investigation will be fair and just. Secondly, the CID does not possess the technical expertise with regard to such matters. We can name a few experts who can conduct a proper investigation along with the Auditor General. The premium is a lump sum cost.
cost of the supplier or exporter that includes transportation charges, port charges, insurance, supplier's profit and the local agent's profit. The premium is a collective of all these costs that are additionally added to the cost of a barrel of fuel. On the 17th and 18th of February 2022, the premium per barrel for 92 octane and 95 octane petrol was 3.87 USD and that was a reasonable fee. Vital Singapore has imported diesel with a premium of 3.4 US dollars per low sulfur barrel and 4.1 US dollars per high sulfur barrel. That was on the 27th and 28th of March 2022. We had the relevant documentation. But on the 14th and 15th of July 2022, the premium hit 25 USD from 3 USD. The premium per barrel of high sulfur diesel is 24 USD. The flat price in Singapore for high sulfur diesel is 129 USD. However, they have quoted 145 USD. The premium alone is 24 USD. Around 300,000 barrels were imported with a premium of 20 USD or more per barrel. That generates an additional profit of 6 million US dollars. In addition to that, since they quoted a $129 barrel at 145 USD, another 16 USD is made as a profit per barrel of fuel. What is unfair is that 50 rupees is being looted off from every single litre of petrol sold in the country. A proper investigation needs to take place, unlike what the CID does with producing people to quote simply to intimidate them. It must be done directly via the Auditor General so that Parliament will also be informed. It is clear that company is engaging in this using a different name. It's the same company involved in the satellite scam. Therefore, it is the responsibility of the energy ministry and the coal supplier to provide details to the Auditor General. The Bribery Commission has decided to discontinue an investigation on attempts to bribe MPs to cross over, citing insufficient information. The Bribery Commission had responded to Transparency International Sri Lanka of the discontinuation over a complaint filed by TISL. In 2018, controversial voice recordings released to the public revealed seeming attempts to bribe MPs to cross over in Parliament during the period when the parliament was deciding upon who should hold the position of the Prime Minister. Immediately following this, on the 5th of June 2018, Transparency International Sri Lanka filed a complaint at the Commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption, requesting an investigation into the matter. Further, on the 10th of December 2018, TISL followed up with Siabok, requesting them to expand the investigation, focusing on a statement from then-President Maitri Palasirisena about bribing MPs. After four years, Siabok has now informed TISL that it has decided to discontinue the investigation due to sufficient information not coming to light. Former State Minister Sanat Nishanta said that the Rajapaksas continue to carry the mandate of 6.9 million people who voted for them. Former ministers who represented the Sri Lanka Purjana Perumuna held a meeting with the SLPP national organizer Basil Rajapaksa in Batramulla. Uh, discussions are being held before making any decision a government must be formed the government must have a cabinet of ministers and state ministers to carry out the necessary duties we hope to work with members of other parties as well some of them are unnecessarily dragging the process that can't happen the country must be taken forward <laughs> This is the government that we initiated. They are willing to appoint me. I will take up the position. We are not asking for preferential treatment when establishing an all-party government. Hand over the responsibilities and portfolios to those who are willing to take up the posts. Once that is done, then you can give us the remaining portfolios. If not, that is fine by us as well.
मैं जाना था आपके तीन रावी पास राजपक्ष रुका हुआ नहीं थे मैं आलू तांड वाले मैं देंगे यार जाना था तुम्हारे तक सागर चावर नाम पर राजपक्ष में तुम्हारे मगीला थी मुकदमे नहीं थे यार राजपक्ष रुका हुआ इवर करान लो मेरे समूल गात्रे करान लो ना नहीं मैं मैं they have a right to join the discussions. The Rajabaksas have won the most votes in the history of Sri Lankan elections. They still have a mandate of 6.9 million people. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa says he is ready to recommence negotiations with the president to uplift the country. He made these remarks during a meeting with an expert committee for reforms. I plan on calling on the president within the next few days and engaging in a positive discussion on the way forward to revive the country from this economic crisis. According to whatever agreement we reach, we will provide our support. However, we support the way forward, not the government. We will not by any means abandon the people. We cannot move forward like that. We will not support any way forward that adds a further burden on the general public. We are not after ministerial portfolios either. Our our objective is to initiate a way forward that makes sure our people are put out of misery and to revive this economy. Hirunika Premachandra today said that she was informed to be present at the Criminal Investigations Department on Saturday morning. We now cross over to a short commercial break. Stay tuned with us. गलन में सातु तक सुरक्षित कराने इस्लाम इनसाइड इस्लाम जीव है चले जीवित है। Welcome back to the news. Defence Secretary General Kamal Gunaratne presided over a conference on national security, law and media reporting in Colombo. We need to ask ourselves if the manner in which the media reported the events of setting houses on fire and riots were right or wrong. If a person's house is set on fire, if a person is beaten, if a person is killed, if a person is pushed into the Bera Lake and beaten, remember that that person is also another citizen of this country. If such a situation is allowed to continue, what can we say about national security? A late Atukurala was beaten and killed and dragged down the stairs by his legs in a very brutal manner. I am not pointing the finger at anyone, but certain media, social media included, immediately showed the acts of violence as it happened. The people of this country were shown how people were beaten, killed, houses set on fire and property being damaged. One can say this is media democracy. Those reports are not only witnessed by the senior citizens of this country, but the small children as well. If the future generations witness this form of violence, we must ask ourselves if, as the media, we are doing our duty. Former Member of Parliament Ajit P. Pereira revealed that there is an attempt to seek a massive amount of compensation citing political persecution. We are informed that Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawadana has submitted a cabinet paper for 117 million rupees to be awarded as compensation to officers who faced legal battles during the government of good governance. Here's the list. लंगर इतना तुरंत था मुना मिलियन हाथरस से मारता है मिलियन हाथरस से मत देखा है मैं भी दिया था विसी हाथ देने कुटे वन दिके वन न किया ला नियम का लतीर they have decided to compensate 27 people. How do they make the calculations? The police and CID have investigated. The Attorney General has filed cases based on evidence. Some cases went to trial as well. Some were found guilty by the High Court and released by the Appeal Court based on a technicality. In some cases, documents were missing. But when investigations are taking place, the documents existed. That is how some people were released. Others still have cases against them. So will every single person released by court be compensated like this? 
ඒතර මේ රටේ අධිකරණයේ නිදහස් වෙන හැම කෙනාටම මම අන්දිගේ වෙනවා parliamentarian nalim bandara convened a media briefing to stress on priorities ada minisunda kanna bonna nathuwa inne habai e kanna bonna nathuwa inne wenna today people are starving but during a time like that we hear that their priority is to repair the damaged houses and the houses that they set on fire with public funds but there are priorities greater than that the people are starving there are people who died in queues houses were damaged by exploding gas cylinders and people died as well and there are also people who die without medicine justice needs to be served to the people instead of the politicians people are finding it difficult to survive yet ranil vikramasinghe has primary duty is to repair the house of the poor to mps if this goes ahead we will face a serious situation mahatma prathama duty e vidihata ishta karanna giyoth bara patala tattayak athi wei gammada was able to rejuvenate hope amongst the people of akaravisa in selakathar gama by laying the foundation stone for yet another clean drinking water project in one of the most rural areas in the outskirts of sri lanka A rural village in Sella Kataragama was plagued with chronic kidney disease as tests had proven that the groundwater was not suitable for consumption. The need for clean drinking water was strongly felt by the hundreds of devotees who visit the Sella Kataragama sacred grounds. Gamma had laid the foundation at the Sella Kataragama Mahasen Rajmaha Vihare for a drinking water project that will solve this perennial issue. The water purification plant will benefit both the villagers and the devotees. This project was made possible due to contributions made by Pradeepa Tilakaratna Jayasekara and Gerdi Tilakaratna from Colombo in memory of Edwin Tilakaratna and by Vinita Jayasinghe from Nugegoda in memory of her parents and brother. News first with the people. ंजन for a screening of the movie The Game which was the last film he acted in before he was imprisoned Actors and actresses who acted in this film were in Colombo for the special screening of the movie The Center for Policy Alternatives said the 22nd Amendment Bill which was gazetted has serious problems. CPA said that it is at best an exercise in window dressing to show the government is initiating token reforms to appease some with no significant positive impact for Sri Lanka and Sri Lankans. In a statement the Center for Policy Alternatives said whilst the bill addresses some of the problems with the previous version of the bill it does not curtail the powers of the president nor introduce checks and balances in any meaningful manner contrary to the demands of the people of Sri Lanka while pointing out that the bill had drawn from the weakest aspects of the 19th and 20th amendments of Sri Lanka the CPA states that if enacted the bill would not address the concerns of citizens for a more accountable and transparent government and in the long run could further undermine democratic institutions and the citizens faith in these institutions cpa is of the view that it does not ensure a majority representation of the council for non politicians and does not remove government dominance over the political members His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit has called on the international community to add clear cut conditions when providing aid to Sri Lanka 
country also has suffered a serious erosion of democracy being caused by three factors one is the gradual deterioration of the rule of law and the interference of political leaders in the judiciary which has made justice an non issue for our people so we want that rectification to happen in that secondly corruption levels of our political setup are very high a few people rather a few families have been earning endlessly while lot of families are uh, in dire poverty so this corruption must stop and an effective means of controlling corruption must be done and thirdly human rights violations have been rather high and uh, the more that the people rise up in protest the more suppressive the governments have become and therefore there are lots of human rights violations and issues for which no answers are forthcoming so all of this requires a transformation in our society we want the international community to pressurize our governments to ensure that these errors are corrected uh, before anything else and then aid be given to us in a way that corruption is not possible anymore so aid should be given to the country with clear cut conditions towards democracy towards the rule of law towards honesty and sincerity in life and uh, finally towards the uh, safeguarding of human rights Australia will provide an additional 25 million dollars to help Sri Lanka meet urgent food and health care need as it confronts its worst economic crisis in 70 years. This additional support brings Australia's official development assistance response to 75 million dollars. The extra humanitarian assistance is in addition to the 23 million dollars in ongoing development assistance to Sri Lanka in 2022 and 2023. Moving on, Regional Director of the United Nations Development Coordination Office and Resident Coordinator of the UN Mission to Sri Lanka won a visit to Jaffna's Divisional Secretariat today. In the meeting with Jaffna District Secretary Ganapati Pillai Maheshan, the UN convoy said they are deeply concerned by the current economic situation in the country and its impact on Sri Lankan lives. Regional Director of the United Nations Development Coordination Office, David McLachlan Carr, arrived on the island on the 16th of August and he has been deep diving into discussions with various parties in Sri Lanka regarding the ongoing social and economic crisis in Sri Lanka. We just signed the cooperation framework, uh, which uh, is really the framework of our uh, partnership with the government over the next five years, from uh, January uh, 2023, uh, for five more years. And we wanted to affirm also our commitment to support uh, the northern province and uh, discuss also the priorities and hear firsthand what are the ongoing challenges and the ongoing priorities as well, so that we can really focus on. the next program on what the people of the north needs Sri Lanka's police spokesperson said that IUSF convener Vasant Mudilige Hashan Gunatilaka and another are to be detained and interrogated for 72 hours he said that police has requested defense minister for permission to detain and interrogate them for 90 days The third phase of the Divisavia program supported by LOLC Holdings continues in a bid to help the worst affected by the economic crisis in Sri Lanka. The third phase of the Divisavia program supported by LOLC Holdings continued for the 14th day. Essential food packages were distributed to the poverty stricken families in the Ratnapura district. The Divya Savya program identifies families that are facing serious issues economically and provides them with much needed relief packages. Russia has rejected appeals for a complete demilitarization around the area of Zaporizhia nuclear plant in southern Ukraine. The move would make the plant more vulnerable.
The calls come amid growing concern over safety at the site, Europe's largest nuclear plant, as both sides accuse each other of shelling the area. Ukraine's workers operate the plant, which has been under Russian control since March. It was one of the first sites seized by Russian troops following the invasion of Ukraine on 24th February. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres sounded the alarm after meeting Ukraine. St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia, retained the Archibald Pereira Trophy, defeating St. Peter's College, Colombo, in their inter-annual school's under-20 rugby encounter. The Thomians defeated the Peterites 23-22 in Bambalapitiya. St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia and St. Peter's College, Colombo locked horns in their annual inter-schools under-20 rugby encounter for the Archibald Pereira Trophy for the 62nd time. Sami Akbar, the CEO of EFP, was the chief guest of the event. St. Thomas's College Mount Lavinia led the first half 20 to 14. St. Peter's College Colombo made a strong comeback in the second half. However, it was not enough to secure a win. The Thomians defeat the Petrites 23 to 22. And that's a wrap of primetime news here on TV1. For more of these stories, you can log on to our website, which is www.newsfirst.lk. For the News First team, I'm Raja Good night and thanks for watching.